Hello, my name is Roy Simpson. I'm a professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. Uh, this is actually an addendum to my lecture that is just a review of multiplying and factoring polynomials. Uh, this is not the proof that I promised in part C. This is just a summary. Um, I was uh, I had spent a long time recording parts A, B, and C that by the time I got to part C of the lecture series, I just was burnt out on recording. So let me just summarize this with the last few examples here. Um, so let's go ahead and do a few. First one we're going to tackle is just another product of a polynomial. Um, so the instructions are kind of weird sounding, right? The product is a polynomial in simplest form. What that essentially means is just multiply it out and combine like terms. Let me just highlight what's going to happen here. There's, um, It's not wrong if you uh, multiply the binomials first, or if you multiply this monomial times one of the binomials. It's, it doesn't matter which order you do it. In fact, let me justify that. 2 times 3 times 5 should be the same as, well, multiplying 2 times 3 first, and then multiplying by 5, or multiplying 2 times the product of 5 times, or 3 times 5. Um, that's the associative property of multiplication just basically says that it doesn't matter which two objects you multiply first as long as you choose to multiply objects um, and get the multiplication done. Often I find it much easier actually to multiply binomials first. I don't know why, it just is a little bit easier for me personally um, and then multiplying the monomial in but it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna signify the multiplication of the binomials here just by distri distribution so that x will distribute to the 2x and it will distribute to the negative y and the 2 will distribute to the 2x and also to the negative y. So this will be equivalent to 2xy squared because we left that alone and then the product of these two binomials will be x times 2x which is 2x squared x times a negative y, which is a negative xy, a positive 2 times a 2x, which is a positive 4x, and finally a positive 2 times a negative y, which is a negative 2y. Now in this case I would try to combine like terms, but as you look through this, none of these terms are the same. So there's nothing to combine here, this is as good as it gets. So now what I'll do is I'll take this coefficient here, this 2xy squared, that monomial, and I will go ahead and distribute it again to each of the terms in the parentheses. So each of these terms gets a 2xy squared attached to it. So let's see here. Uh, 2xy squared times a 2x squared. Well, the 2 times the 2 will give me a 4 x times x squared will give me an x cubed, and then I just have the y squared still attached to that. 2 times this negative will be a negative 2. x times the x will give me the x squared, and y squared times y will give me a y cubed. 2 times a positive 4 will give me a positive 8 x times x will give me an x squared, and finally y squared, well there's no y there so it's just a y squared. 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4, and x times, well there's no x so it's just x, and y squared times y is a y cubed. Again just check through to make sure there's no like terms, there are none, so this is done. I will often see students that will try to uh, at this point factor. Uh, the the idea of factoring here is kind of bad because we have spent all this time distributing, in other words um, getting rid of parentheses. If you start factoring you're gonna, you're going to create parentheses so uh, you're gonna undo all the stuff that you've just done so this is the perfect answer here. Now we go into the factoring examples We'll start with a very simple factoring example. I see that's a trinomial. I'll see if I can factor anything out that's common. And as you look through this, each of those three terms has nothing in common. In other words, you can't find a common factor for all three. So now I know, since it's a trinomial, that I hopefully can factor it into the product of two binomials. 
Uh, let's see, I need to get an x squared, so this should be an x and that should be an x. And then I need two numbers that multiply to 10 but add to negative 7. Well, two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 7, at least, are 2 and 5. And as long as they're both negative, you'll see that they can actually add up to become negative 7. Negative 2 times a negative 5 will actually be a positive 10, and a negative 2 minus another 5 will be a negative 7. So this will be a negative 2 and a negative 5. You can always check your answer by multiplying this back out. And that was the guess and check method. In this next example, we again have another trinomial. In this trinomial, I'm going to first check to see if I can factor anything out that is common. If you look through all three of those terms, there's nothing in common with them. Uh, so we're out of luck. The next thing we're going to do is just the guess and check method to see if we can easily factor this into two binomials. So I know I'm, not, I'm going to need a 2z and I'm going to need a z. And now let's look at the factors of 40 here because I want these last two numbers to multiply to a negative 40. Well, a good piece of advice here when you're using the guess and check is to avoid numbers like 1 and 40. Th those are usually the last things I check. So I won't do 1 and 40 or 2 and 20 first. Um, although I might write them down, but I'll likely not check them first. Okay. Uh, by the way, because these coefficients are not the same, in other words, that's a 2z and that's a 1z, since they're not the same, I have to write 1 and 40 and then 40 and 1. 2 and 20 and 20 and 2. Uh, let's see, 4 and 10, 10 and 4, and then uh, 5 and 8, and 8 and 5. But I'm not likely to check, see that's a long list of factors, right? I'm not likely to check the 1 and 40s or the 2 and 20s first. In fact, I usually will check these ones at the bottom first. So if I do that, you'll see just by um, multiplying this 2 times this 5, I'll get 10. And this 8 times this 1 here, I'll get 8. And there's no way to combine 10 and 8 to get to 11, so I'll just cancel that out. Next one I'll look at is 2 and 8. 2 times 8 is 16. And 5 times 1 is 5. And 16 and 5 I could definitely manipulate to become 11. So I'm going to put the 8 here and the 5 there. It would have to be a positive 16 minus 5 to become 11. And that's actually the factorization right there. You don't actually have to have the 1 on there. Now to remind people of the method that I was using in part C of this lecture series, um, I was essentially just looking at this and saying, okay, well, let's see, let me write this out first. I was looking at this and I would say, okay, well, uh, I know that this polynomial is the same thing as 2 over 2 times this polynomial, right? And normally I wouldn't even write down all this stuff, but then I distribute that 2 in. So I have 1 half times 4z squared plus 22z minus 80. And then I would try to factor that polynomial, but using a very special technique. When I try to factor it, I know that I'm going to factor it to where the binomial factors start with 2z and 2z. Both of them will have the same coefficients. And I want two numbers that multiply to this negative 80, but add to a, ne to a positive 11. And that's the kicker with this method. Two numbers that multiply to a negative 80, but add to that positive 11 in the initial problem. And so let's look at some factors of 80. And to be honest with you, I'm going to skip 1 and 80 because I know that's not going to work. And 2 and 40 is not going to work. Uh, 3, 4 and, and 20. Uh, 5 and 16. Oh, look at that. 5 and 16. 5 and 16 are the winners. Uh, if I want to get to a positive 11, I'll need this to be a positive 16 and a negative 5. Negative 5 times positive 16 is that negative 80. So that's my factorization. I'm going to factor a 2 out of this last binomial because it can factor out. So I'll factor a 2 out front. And 
and you see 2 over 2 cancels nicely. So uh, that's just 2z minus 5 times z plus 8. I still owe you the proof on that, um, and I will uh, put that up online soon. But as, I, as I've mentioned in the past, um, I would avoid using any type of technique like this uh, unless uh, the guess and check method just fails for you. Specifically, if they're very large numbers, it's, that's when the guess and check is very difficult, and highly factorable numbers also. In this next example, again, I start off by asking, do either of these factors have, or do both these factors have something in common? And they do. They're both divisible by 4, and they both are divisible by h squared. Remember, when you're factoring, you pull out the lowest power to currents of what they have in common. So, for example, their h's they have in common, I'll pull out the lowest power of h, which is an h squared. What I'm left with, well, I originally had a 4h to the fourth here, and I divided out a 4h squared. You see those cancel nicely to give me just an h squared. Minus, in this spot I had a 36h squared, I'm dividing out a 4h squared. You'll see the h squared over h squared turns into 1, and 4 goes into 36 nine times. So this is a beautiful factorization so far, but you're not done. You always have to look to see if this can be factored further, and you can see that this is actually a difference of squares, right? This is an h squared minus 3 being squared. So remember how difference of squares works, is that it's the first minus the last times the first plus the last. It's just h minus 3 times h plus 3. You can multiply that back out just to see if it works, but it does. As a final example in this wrap-up here, I'm just going to talk about this problem. Uh, again, I see a trinomial. Uh, I'm going to see if anything is common between all three of these terms, and I see that they're all divisible by 10. And in fact, I'm going to factor out a negative 10 because I don't like my lead coefficient being negative. So I'll factor a negative 10 out front. So if I divide off a negative 10 off that first term, I'm left with a positive u squared. If I divide the negative, this uh, negative 100 u by a negative 10, I'm left with a positive 10 u. And again, if I divide off a negative 10 off this 390, I'll have a negative 39. This is actually one of those trinomials that can be factored pretty easily, just find two numbers that multiply to a negative 39 and add to a positive 10. Only two numbers multiply to 39, 13, and 3. So it should be a positive 13 and negative 3 if you want to multiply them together to become negative and still add them up to become a, a positive 10. So this is going to factor with negative 10 times u plus 13 times u minus 3. Okay, that's just another brief review, a summary of, of the styles that uh, we've seen in the previous lectures.